I want to welcome everyone joining us today. For those joining us online as well, in our online community, we want to welcome you. Thank you so much for joining us on this very special Thanksgiving Sunday. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together for everyone joining us in the online community? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. So if you're watching online with your family, watching online with your friends, just take a quick picture, you know, put it up on social media, tag us, let us know that you guys are watching. Uh, if you're dressed up, looking good, looking wonderful in your attire, put it up as well. And let's know that amazing, amazing things are happening for you and in you and around you in your family in the name of Jesus. I said, hallelujah. I said, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, this morning we thank you as we step go into your word. Spirit of the living God, breathe upon us in a unique way and help us to understand more of you in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. 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 Glory to God. Now, in this month of February, it's the last Sunday in the month of February. Can you believe it? Two months have gone already in the year 2022. Our God is awesome. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is awesome. All right. Now, now, um, in the month of February, we've been talking about growth. We've been talking about leveraging relationships to grow and all those types of things. So those are just some of the things that we've been talking about. And it's been a phenomenal experience. Uh, it's been a powerful experience. Uh, one of the things that we want to try to uh, talk about today, all right, I, I, I want to try to talk about two things, right? Um, and, and how we can change our levels, uh, leveraging relationships and things like that. But I want to start out by looking at something that I think is very important uh, to changing our levels with relationships. And that is something we call self-awareness. Somebody say self-awareness. Somebody say self-awareness, right? Uh, uh, self-awareness refers to a good knowledge and judgment about oneself, okay? Bible says that let us ensure that nobody thinks more highly of themselves than they ought to. In other words, you must be self-aware, all right? You must not think of yourself more highly than you ought to, but at the same time, you must not think of yourself more lowly than you ought to. Somebody say hallelujah. So, so God requires you to have a good balance, and having a good balance is about self-awareness. It's about knowing who you are because as a believer if you don't know who you are right if you don't know what you are good at if you don't know what you are not good at chances are that growth will be will be will be very very difficult for you when you are not self-aware and you don't know who you are right the devil himself will take you for a ride right he's going to steal from you the things that god has given you because he knows you don't know who you are he knows you don't know what you have so it is important that you are aware now self-awareness helps you in identifying the areas where you need to work on and the areas where you don't need to work on the areas where you need to consolidate and the areas where you need to uh, 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 improve glory to god because if you don't know who you are and you don't understand yourself then you will not be able to take advantage of your strengths People ask me this question all the time. Should I focus on my strengths or should I focus on my weaknesses? My answer is always the same. It depends on where you are in life. As you are growing in life, you need to do a lot of things. Glory to God. But as you get older and as you grow more and more in your career, you need to focus on your strengths and staff your weaknesses. Because you cannot focus on your weakness and be better at it than you are at your strengths. No amount of focusing on your weakness will make you better than your strengths. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you don't necessarily focus. You focus on your weakness at a level where that weakness is depriving you of a promotion. But once you have achieved certain levels, leave that weakness. Focus on your strength so that you can leverage that strength to achieve more. And then you can pay somebody else to man the area where you are weak. Because even if they call you four man, you can't do the work of four people. Glory to God. So there are certain things you can do that you are good at. And you need to be self-aware. Self-awareness helps you even in identifying who your mentor should be. Why? Because you identify your gaps and you know who you need in your life that will help you plug those gaps. Because some of us pick mentors anyhow. You just see somebody and say, ah, I like that guy. Let him be my mentor. He may not, listen, he may not be able to address an area where you need. Somebody say Hallelujah. So, it's critical that you are self-aware. So, let me give you five ways very quickly that you can be more self-aware. Practical ways that you can be more self-aware. Number one, take personality tests. Take personality tests. Some of you don't like it when they say that you are a sanguine or that you are melancholy or you are phlegmatic. You say, no, I'm a victor in Christ Jesus. Calm down. Don't over-spiritualize this thing. Self-awareness is not self-acceptance. Awareness means I know that this is me. Have I accepted it? Acceptance means I don't want to change it. 
But awareness means that I know that this is it so that I can work on it. So, you can, I mean, you can't tell me that your child is failing in school. And you say, no, my child is not a failure. He's a victor in Christ Jesus. Baba, he's not do, his exam is failing. <laughs> the way that which is going, he will not enter school. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because when you graduate with first class to one, your opportunities are different from somebody that graduated with third class or pass. Let's just tell, hallelujah. hallelujah. I know some, listen, where I used to work, praise the Lord, if you don't come out with two one, they will not, you won't even write their test. So there is different. So you can't be saying, you, you can't be living in the denial that, ah, no, you, you're, you've seen the GP, 1.5. I said, no, we are moving higher, higher in Jesus' name. You know, I saw a video one time. Somebody entered a lift. He said, is this lift going down? He said, no, I'm not going down in Christ Jesus. I'm not going, Baba, calm down. I want you to still go downstairs. <laughs> we just like to over-spiritualize things. They say you are sanguine. He said, no, I'm not sanguine. I'm phlegmatic in Jesus' name. Calm down. Nobody is fighting with you. So when you take a personality test, see, I know people who take personality tests every month. They just want to see what they have improved upon. So don't over-spiritualize it. Amen? Amen? It's not the Bible, praise the Lord. It's just somebody giving you feedback. Hallelujah. That's all it is. Feedback. And feedback is the breakfast of champions. Glory to God. Number two, consider any area where you are struggling as a learning area. In other words, if in your area of business, you are struggling in marketing, that is an area that is giving you feedback. Any area where you struggle is a feedback area. Where you are, if you are struggling with raising children, that's feedback. If you are struggling with finances, child of God, that's feedback. And I love the way somebody said, he said, listen, eh, if there's any area of your life where you are struggling with, to, to address that area, read the number of books equivalent to your age in that area. So if you are 40 years old and you don't have money, read 40 books on money. You will not be poor again. The challenge is many people can't sit down to do that work. Praise the Lord. So any area where you struggle, if you struggle with expanding your business, that is an area giving you feedback. Any area where you struggle, if you struggle with prayer, that's an area. If you struggle with, and that's why we talk about small groups, because the challenge is this, many of you are struggling in some areas, and you see people that can help, you see a group that can help, but you refuse. Number three, ask trusted people. Ask trusted people. Listen, let me tell you something. Eh? One of the greatest things I've learned in life is that people have different stakes in your life. The stake of your parents is different from the stake of your boss. Your boss wants you to do well at work. Your parents want you to do well in life. Make sense? The stake of your wife is different from the stake of, you know, some other people. The stake of your pastor is different from the stake of some other people in your life. Are you with me? The challenge is, is many of us go and meet people with a bent stake for a generalized decision. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you go and meet somebody that you know will tell you to do this. Who are you deceiving? Glory to God. So, all right? Trusted people. Ask for feedback at work. If at work they tell you that you are stingy, my brother, you are stingy. He said, no, I reject it in Christ Jesus. Calm down. Stop being stingy in Christ Jesus. If your wife tells you, honey, you, you don't give. Uh, it has taken me 12 years to tell you, but you are, uh, uh, you are a panji. You are akagom. You say it does not. Ah, things don't just flow from your ministry. People who trust you. Right? Number four, find a coach or a mentor. And we'll talk about mentorship. That's the second thing I want to talk about today. Find a coach or a mentor. A coach that has a stake that knows that, listen, your development is my priority. Number five, meditate. Yeah, meditation. Sit down and ask yourself, who am I? Who am I? And uh, can you answer that question without mentioning your name? Can you answer that question without talking about what you do? You say, who are you? I'm a HR professional. Mm, that's not who you are. When you want to describe who you are, you don't use a word that describes a job. You use a word that describes uh, uh, a mission, what you do. I am an empowerer. I empower people. I may be doing it in HR. I may be doing it as a CEO of the organization. But I am primarily this kind of person. I was listening to someone one time. He said, listen, I am a phenomenal leader. He may be a bus driver. But he leads whenever, anywhere he is. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
He may be a carpenter, but he's a leader in that carpentry business. Do you understand what I'm saying? So who you are is not about what you do. Some of you don't know who you are. And that's why, right, that's, you know, that's why they say life begins at 40. Because many times, for most people, it's at 40, they really know who they are. Because they've tried many things. They've now come down to say, Baba, calm down. You are no more young. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So meditate. Who am I? What am I good at? What am I not good at? See, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Eh, I know. But now that you are not yet inside Christ, eh, who, who are you? All right. So, so, one of the things we've talked about is the fact that um, self-awareness helps you identify the right mentors. I'll tell you personally, right? Uh, uh, I used to be the kind of person that um, um, I, I am very emotionally invested in many things. What that means is that if I am invested in something and you give me bad news or bad feedback about it, I get so depressed, right? The thing even begins to affect me generally. It affects everything. All of a sudden, I realize that on no, for no reason at all, for in some cases, I'll just be angry. So maybe you found out that your son didn't do well in school, but now you're angry with the driver. What is the correlation between your son and the driver? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So I, I, I used to be that kind of person where my emotions were all over the place. Until I read something Warren Buffett said one day. He said, if you're that kind of person, you will always suffer in the hands of people. I said, my goodness. Listen, my brother and my sister, I had to work on it too. By prayer, by finding a mentor. So the mentor I went to look for is one guy. This guy was going through so much, and I did not know. See, eh? I used to be that kind of person. If I'm going through something, just check. Seriously enough, you will find it. Because if it's not written on my face, it will be written somewhere. You know how it will be written? <clears throat> Where is it? You are looking for the key that is in front of you. Has that ever happened to you before? <laughs> so, you know that so your emotions are all over the place. So, I had to learn it. I had to find a mentor in that area. I asked him one day. I said, how do all these things not get to you? And he told me certain things. And to God be the glory. Today, if you like, be jumping up and down. I'll just be looking at you. I am at peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Why? In the end, all things work together for my good. That's it. That's it. It does not matter. In the end, everything works together for me. Listen, if I share with you some dangerous revelations that God gave me on this matter. God told me one day, he said, why do you think that you will be out of my will? He says, which child are you? Kabaya satala bakuna mahaya. I knew from that day, listen, eh, when the hand of God is upon you, it doesn't matter what you put your hand on. Listen, if, they say, if you know how to drive, even if they give you a trailer that you have never driven before, you will do something. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ah, you will make progress. Glory to God. I said glory to Jesus. So, that's what mentoring does. So, what is mentoring? It is a process of leveraging the wisdom and experience and exposure of someone else who is well ahead of you. Leveraging that person's wisdom. Leveraging that person's experience. How do you grow? How does mentoring grow you? Number one, it amplifies your potential. It amplifies your potential. I want to ask you a question. How long will it have taken Joshua to learn how to fill the shoes of Moses? Mentoring amplifies your potential. Mentoring, mentoring strengthens your faith. Mentoring strengthens your faith. When they told Mary that you are going to be the, the mother of Jesus, she went to meet Elizabeth. And in meeting Elizabeth, her faith was strengthened. The babe in the womb of Elizabeth leaped up. When you have the right people in your life, your faith is strengthened. And I'm going to show you something as we go along in Hebrews chapter 6. Hallelujah. How does mentoring grow you? Through mentoring, you access wisdom. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. I think, you know, that looks like my first scripture. Praise God. Proverbs 13, 20. I just don't have time. I have a lot of scriptures. Proverbs 13, 20. Bible says, he that walketh with wise men shall be what? But a companion of fools shall be what? Now, get, get, here's the thing. One of the things I noticed in this scripture is that the people that you are walking with are wise men, not wise men. Meaning that as much as possible, try to have more than one mentor. Why? Perspective. Glory to God. Even destruction, it requires a companion. 
If you have only one friend that is a fool, it's very likely that he will not destroy you. But when you have two, three, you know, you are becoming a company. I don't, do you understand what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. Because let me tell you something there. Eh? Even the best, the best performing people in this life, they have one friend that is a fool. Just one. It's just like you can't affect them. I don't know if you understand. So don't chase all the people in your life. Praise the Lord. What do, how does mentoring grow you? It elevates your fear. It elevates your fear. There was, listen, there, there are certain things when you go and talk to a mentor about that. This is what is this is what's wrong worrying me. Don't look at you. Really? Is that all? There's a guy that, you know, started a particular business. And the business, he was just struggling to put the business on its feet and all of that and all of that. So he started talking to me. One day he came and he started telling me all the challenges. That, in fact, see, he had gotten so bad that he was waiting for a truck to come and move some goods. And you know how Nigerians can be. I'm on my way, I'm on their way. They are not coming anywhere. They are still buying diesel in the first station. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I, and so I called him. I said, what's going on? He says, I'm frustrated. I said, so why are you frustrated? He said, this truck said, I said, he will come since morning. He has not come. I remembered me many years ago. Because things like that will frustrate me. But now, <coughs> hey, it is well, amen. You can't come and use your own indiscretion to destroy my life. No. I choose possession over my emotions. The Bible says, in your patience, possess ye your souls. Possess your soul. Hold your soul together and say, my soul, calm down. By the time I finished talking to him, he said, wow, I just have clarity. That's what mentorship does. That's what mentorship does. You don't go and talk to somebody that you call a mentor and they have compounded your problem. So what's the point now? You are now more confused than when you started. That's not a mentor. That's a tormentor. <laughs> Glory to God. So why is mentoring important? Number one, training. Training. Jethro was the one that trained Moses on how to apportion work so that he will not die. Training. How, why is mentoring important? Growth. The hair, as long as he is a child, differeth not from his servant. Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. If you don't grow, certain things will, you will not access. If you don't grow, there are certain things you cannot access. Glory to God. No matter how much you love your 10-year-old, no matter how much you say this, my 10-year-old, I love him with all my life, you will not give him the keys to a Ferrari. Why? He needs to grow. And let me tell you something. No matter how anointed you are, no matter how powerful you are, you'll be four years old before you're five. Uh, we can give you pro double promotion in class. Life does not give double promotion. And that's why certain people, when you see certain young people in the midst of mature people, sometimes you can tell that, ah, this one is still, hey, 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 he's still rough around the edges. Glory to God. Why is mentoring re important? It reduces your rate of error. You don't have to make the same mistakes. And let me tell you something. This is one of my challenges with uh, the people in the younger generation, right? They disregard the older the generation. And what that means is they'll make the same mistakes they did. You know why? Your life is too short to know all the things you need to know. How, how long do you live? 100 years. You can't know everything. You must learn from people. So if you, I mean, if you are watching someone and the person came, came, and when he got to this place, he did like this. You saw the second person. He came. He got to this place. He did like this. Even when you, you are passing, what will you do? You will move now. Praise the Lord. But guess what? Even if you don't want to move, right? You find out from the two of them, what did you see? Foolishness is going just like that. Wisdom is asking them what they saw. The younger generation don't want to ask the older ones, what are you seeing? They just want to do. And you will repeat the same mistakes. And let me tell you something. Eh? The only way progress happens is when we build on the mistakes of others. If you don't build on the mistakes of others, you will never make progress. That's why in some countries, <clears throat> let me not mention their name, when a politician comes and erases everything the previous politician has done, the, the state, the country has just gone backwards. Because no matter how bad what that guy did, there are certain good things that they can build upon. But when you want to show power, you fall for reverse everything that the former politician has done, you have caused problem. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, why is mentoring important? It gives you access to opportunities that are beyond your level. Access to opportunities that are beyond your level. One day, I went to um, one of the top most business schools in this country. And I went to see a particular professor. And he was talking to me about certain things, talking to me about certain things. One day, he just took me into his class and said, teach this class. Ah! See, eh? I... <laughs> hey! There are places that in years of working, you will not enter. It's somebody that will say, come, let's go. Uh, ask Paul and Barnabas. Saul, after he got converted from Saul to Paul, he wanted to go and join the apostles. He said, no, you don't join like that too. Join waiting. Join fire. He said, lie, lie. He took Barnabas to carry him by the hand and say, this one, I vouch for him. Let him enter. Talking to one of my mentors the other day, and I like, I'm trying to build relationships. He said, No problem, no problem. I'll introduce you to this golf club. I don't even know where to buy, where they sell golf club. I, do you understand what I'm saying? But that introduction alone, I have to go and buy it. Why? They, in that club, there are queue, people on queue. You know, queue. Mentors will take you from the back to the front. Uh, have you ever been in that, you know, <laughs> I remember those days, you know, when you, you know, the way you enter school is by who you know. Uh, do you remember those days? So you'd be sitting in someone's office. You say, ah, sir, please help now. Nah. We're trying to enter this university. Enter this university. So oh, just come and say, hey, my guy, alpha, alpha. He says, now nah, this is my child. I'm trying to help. Ah, really? They don't, come, 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 come. We are registered. I write this name. Right, right, write the name. Uh, as it, some of you, that's how you enter school. Am I right? Uh, he says, this one, write it, write it. He says, number 45. Now, nah, number 46. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight. Let me tell you something there. Eh? In this kingdom, who doesn't like you does not matter. Who likes you matters. Who doesn't like you? It's not important. But who likes you? Ah, Baba, it's important. You know, I was reading the book of Esther. I saw something there that shocked me. The Bible says that, and everyone that looked upon Esther favored her. Ah! If everyone that looks upon you in a day favors you, you will not pray again. Just imagine that as you're in church now, so everybody's looking at me now. Everybody's just dashing me something. Glory to God. Ah, my brother, I'll be here again tomorrow. <laughs> look at me more. Hallelujah. You don't want to look at me? If everyone that looks upon you favors you, hi. There are some dangerous prayers. You say, Father, glory to God. So, mentorship builds capacity. Mentorship builds capacity. The last one in here is this. Mentoring gives you perspective. One day, I went to complain to a mentor about somebody else. That mentor, see this one, that this person is doing, blah, 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 blah. After I finished complaining, he looked at me. He said, you have not said anything new. You know when you say things that you have poured your mind? You know, you know many of you know, you pour your mind that this is what's going on. And you're expecting egg-shaking revelation. That, ah, my brother, I perceive in my spirit that this is what's happening. He said, oh, guy, you've not said anything new. It's like, pour, pour cold water on me. I don't know. Does it happen to you? Shoo. Now, wow. After 30 minutes of ranting. That's all you can say. But they give you perspective. They help you see that what you are going through is not only you. And there is comfort knowing that you are not alone. Glory to Jesus. So, Let's close. What do you look for in a mentor? Number one, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. This is very important. I want to show you something. The Bible says that, that ye be not slothful, but what? Followers of them, what? Who through faith and patience do what? Inherit the promise. I want to show you two things from there. The first thing I want to show you is that you need to follow those who have inherited the promise. Bible says that follow those who have obtained the promise, not those who can explain the promise. I don't want to know how beautiful the land is. Take me there. Do you understand what I'm saying? But the second thing I want to show you is this. It says that followers of them who through what? Faith and what? Why? Because in your own life as well, to achieve what they have achieved, you will also need faith and patience. So anybody that obtained what they obtained by Mago Mago, that's not faith and patience. Why? Because you will probably not have that experience. Anybody that obtained what they obtained by one hit wonder, you know one hit wonder? They only produce one song. That's all. Do you know what I'm talking about? Today, they are, they are doing something else. Hallelujah. 
He says, follow those who, through faith and patience. In other words, they used their faith and they were patient to deliver results. Why am I saying this? Because we live in a generation where people want to quickly do yahoo yahoo. Where people want to do money ritual. Bible says that's not the way. How, what is the way? Through what? Whatever you have obtained in this life, ask yourself, did I release my faith for it? Because the Bible says that's how you will obtain. So, you know what this means? If you are the kind of Christians who want God to do a, a magic, not a miracle, you know what I'm talking about? You want God to do magic, not miracle, then God is not your God. Why? Because the way he does what he does is through what? Faith and what? So, your mentor should have the results that you desire. Your mentor should have the results that you desire. I was, you know, I listened to someone one time. He said, listen, when I was going to become rich, the first thing I realized is this. Two poor people cannot help themselves. So, what would, what would they teach themselves? See, it may sound harsh, but it's the reality. Glory to God. Number two, your mentor must be able and willing to guide you. They must be willing to give you audience. Listen, there's nothing wrong with chasing a mentor to try and get their time. But listen, they must be willing to give it. Because many of us are chasing people who will never even answer you. Glory to God. It's one thing if you can see progress. It's another thing when you know that this one is leading nowhere. Because I've seen people who say that so-so person is your mentor. You've never spoken to them before. You've there's no interaction. They are not your mentor. They are, they are your father. They are far, just far people. You can't call them mentor. If you have a challenge now, you can't pick up the phone and call them. No. I understand if you are trying to work on some relationships and you will get there, but they are not yet your mentors. Glory to God. Number three, honesty and integrity of heart. They don't have any hidden agenda. I went to meet one, someone, uh, someone introduced me to uh, uh, a potential mentor at the time, you know, and when I went there, the first thing he said, ah, I knew that this guy knew what he was talking about. Because when I came there and I told him what I was doing, blah, 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 he asked me two questions. Listen, those two questions destabilized me. Because I said, eh, <clears throat> sir, sir, okay. Um, well, I'm working on it. You know when you're, you know you're stammering and you know that? <laughs> oh. And you know what? God has a way of doing it, eh? That when you're in front of mentors, people that will really mentor you, excuses that you used to give before will disappear from your head. All of a sudden, the excuse will just disappear. Somehow, you know, I used to be very talkative. Do you understand? Yeah. As in, you know, especially when you're the kind of person that nobody can pin you down to a corner with any conversation. You have a way of coming out. You, you find your way out. They'll just hook you. Sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Well, well, we are working on it. Actually, sir, we are not working on anything. Help. <laughs> Number four, people you admire, people you can submit to. People you admire, people you can submit to. Listen to me. There is no point claiming someone is your mentor when they tell you to do something and you don't do it. I spoke to somebody one time that, that was looking at me like a mentor. I said, listen, I keep telling you to do this, do this, do this. It's exactly what I say you should not do that you are doing. I said, I can't be your mentor. You can't. I, I don't have time for this. I don't have time. Because after you don't do what I say, you now come back and start complaining. I don't have that kind of time. You can't call someone your mentor. You don't do what they say. They wrote a book. You've read the book, but you're not doing what the book says. He says, he's my mentor. He's not your mentor. He's your consultant. He's, uh, he's just advising you. He's not your mentor. Make sure you pick people that when they tell you something, you do what they say. Why? If you are not going to do it, then don't bother with that relationship. Then don't bother. So, you come and meet someone, and, and I see it a lot, especially in church. You say, ah, pastor, pastor, ah, this is going on, this is going on. You say, okay, you know what you do? Take this scripture, read it, confess it three times a day. They will not confess. No. Christians will not confess. But if you gave them something, and you say, this thing I'm giving you, every morning bring it out of your pocket. Look at it, and face the northwest. Bend down and spread yourself like this, and be talking. You say, as you continue to do it, after three days, you will see that woman will love you. Which one will many people do? Ah! 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 Most of them. That's the challenge with you. You think because you, you have cheapened their advice. 
Because they've not told you to bring the tongue of a cobra. The tail of a spider. Because that's not what they've told you. All they've told you is take the word, confess it three times a day. Why? Why did they say confess it three times a day? Because the word of God is medicine to your flesh. And you take the word like somebody is taking medicine. You consume it. You can't take a malaria drug one time and expect the malaria to disappear. No, you must follow fancy dance pre prescription. The problem with you is the simplicity of the gospel. Sometimes I wish God had made it more difficult. Many Christians will believe. that. How can I just say, Father, save me, and you save me? No, I must move. I must gyrate. I must have been chasing him for two years. That's why you are where you are. But mentors will tell you that this stress is unnecessary. Let's go up higher. Have you learned something this morning? <laughs>